ready to mess me up. You know, you can be a parent that micromanage your children that you're looking for them to mess up. Jada, you're so beautiful. Clara, you're so beautiful. Aslan, you're so beautiful. Brooklyn, you're so beautiful. Roman, you're so handsome. Silas, you're handsome. Braxton, Jackson. Brian, I don't know. Oh, no, there's more than one Brian here. That's all, you know. Thank you. Awesome. I, I am excited. I'm always excited about the word. I, I, I live a pretty exciting life. And I, I really hope. I'm thinking that this Sunday is probably the, the kind of the conclusion for this series, Cloud Seeding. I hope that you, you, you're grasping this. Um, if you've not been on the last two Tuesday nights in prayer, I did some teaching. Man, just absolutely lifts, lifts the fog off of where you are and what we are, so... Uh, unfortunately, we're not putting that on the airwaves because it's just stuff that I don't, without being in the in the atmosphere, in the context, that I want out. But it's nothing hidden or nothing secretive, but it's just you need to be, understand the whole context, context and not bits and pieces. So th- this morning, out of all the, these three, this is the third episode of this series, and I'm, I hope you get this this morning. It's Cloud Seeding Part 3, mm-hmm. but the subtitle of the Cloud Seeding is, Is There a King Inside You? Is There a King Inside You? And we're going to, we're going to kind of dive a little deep in this, and I... I Want you to? I'm praying, and that's why we prayed before that you grasp this and get this. Yahweh, you know what? Yahweh, that's the name of God. God's not His name, but Yahweh, His Word and His Spirit lives within you. Now, sometimes we get things kind of weird. We get weirded out about things and don't understand things, but. What I want you to know is there is the spirit of Christ in you, but that is, you know, it's kind of like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all in one. They have different roles and different functions, so they all are with inside you. But when we say Jesus come into my heart, Jesus is not coming into your heart. That that is a quote-unquote Baptist evangelical terminology that sounds good, but it's... It's Holy Spirit comes and lives within you. I sent a text out this week that if you were standing right here, you by yourself, and Jesus was right here, and you had to choose whether you wanted to continue to live the way you're living or wanted to spend time a week, a day, or a month with Jesus, would you choose Jesus over who you are and what you are right now? And most people would absolutely choose Jesus. I just want to tell you, Jesus is ineffective for you in where you are today. Jesus was the son of God, firstborn. But he said that when he died, but was buried and resurrected, and Holy Spirit came, that now there are sons of God. There was a multiplication Jesus could only be at one place at one time in his physical body. Holy Spirit is across the globe all the time. Holy Spirit has greater ability in the sense of being in multiple places than Jesus did because Jesus was in a body. And see, you have Holy Spirit in you which is the Spirit of Christ. It says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, we are one. So you have Holy Spirit in you. You do not need Jesus. 
I know that seems so weird to say that, Papa John. You needed Jesus to get the key to get into the, the house. But now that I'm in the house, I don't need... You needed the cross to get into the house, the key. But now that I'm in the house, I don't need the key anymore. I have access to everything now. Does that make sense? Okay, so... We read in Matthew 12, 42, we read that it, this is, a, this is the, the gospel talking about the, the Queen of Sheba. And remember when Queen Sheba, she, she traveled so far and she went to see Solomon. And when she got there, it said she was breathless at the excellence and at the kingdom that Solomon had created in, in Matthew 12, 42, it's repeated, and it says this. It says, people, the queen, queen traveled to the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, someone more and greater than Solomon is here. If you are in Christ and Christ is in you, you have greater access to wisdom at your disposal than Solomon had. See, we look back and say, oh, Solomon. And we look back at the patriarchs and we see them as our models. They are not your models. You can admire them. You can learn from them. You can disassociate from certain traits of them. But Christ lives in us. And when he lives in us, we have full access to everything in the kingdom of God. You are lacking nothing. You are missing nothing in who you are. So... When it comes to, we, we've been reading in, in, in Revelations, it says that God hath made us kings and priests. You are a king and a priest. Your king is your authority. Your priesthood is your access to God. Your access to the throne room. So you, it's, you can't just be a king, but you got to have, you're a godly king. You understand what I'm saying? So listen to this, why aren't you in the physical, now hear what I'm saying, last week I said something a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about, you know, everything now out there is I'm a queen. See, you're never, you are never delegated queenship. You are never delegated kingship. If you are a king or if you are not fronting as a queen, you have a heritage because you are born into kingship. You're not giving kingship. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You do not get to call yourself a king or a queen unless you have the pedigree to back up Someone, see, you don't, some of us, honestly, we don't have no pedigree to anything. So all you are is talking something that doesn't exist. And I'm not trying to be critical of that, but you are born into, when you got saved, you are born into the kingdom of God, adopted into him as a son and therefore, you got born into the incorruptible seed was planted in you. And you are born into the kingship of God. You are a royal, I am a royal priesthood. A peculiar people. It's big. I know we know it. But knowing it, being able to live it, being able to talk it, being able to, to, to discuss it. There is no king functioning in you and I when we complain. When you complain, when you grumble, when you are negative, when you are deceitful, when you are whatever, when you are operating in that tone, in that outlook, there is no king functioning you at that moment. You have forgot your identity of who you are and who God says we are. You never hear kings talk about the situation because they have the access to change every situation. 
Are you all with me? Are you, are, you up, are you up to par with me here? So when you were born into the kingdom of God, let's, let's now pause right here and let's run back to Adam. Adam was born, created into that, but he was able to function into kingdoms. He was born, he had a physical body, but he was also spiritual, so he was functioning in the spirit realm. That's how he could name all the animals, because he was discerning who he was in God and what God said. So he was, he was able to draw from the spirit realm into the physical realm and decree in the physical realm what he saw and discerned in the spiritual realm. Do you know the difference between conscious and unconscious? Conscious means I am aware of my surroundings and my situation and what's going on and what I feel. When I am unconscious, it does not mean you're dead. It means I'm disconnected from being able to feel and see what's going on. I'm still alive. When someone is unconscious, they're alive, but they're not aware. So it takes your brain and your emotions and your mouth. It takes the consciousness to connect the spirit realm to the physical realm so, you're, so you know what's going on. The problem is we so function in the conscious realm that we are unaware of what's going on in the unconscious realm. You have to hear in the unconscious realm and speak into the conscious realm. That's what faith is. You have to see it. It says, remember when Elijah said, I pray that your eyes would be open so you can see. When his eyes was open, he saw the angels of God, the angels encamped around them. See, you don't see the angels around you. We, we in Western civilization, I remember years ago, I'm sure Papa John and Diane and some of the olders and even some others, that meditation was mystical and wrong. Because what makes atheists today and what makes people realist and intellectuals, they must taste, feel, see, hear. If it's not in the five senses, it does not exist. That is naturalistic, and you cannot exist in that realm and hear what God has to say. You are spirit first. So when Adam was created, when the sin occurred, there was a breach in the ability to operate in, in those domains of both of them. Man was put on earth, and if you read Genesis 1, he was put on earth to have dominion, to dominion. In order to have a domain, you have to be a king. Hello, talk to me for a minute. In order to rule, you have to have authority. So he was put on the earth to colonize earth, and God created a garden that was well-defined and very good, and he said, make the rest of the garden like this. He gave him an example. And we were supposed to colonize the earth to be like heaven. If you study Rome, they would go out and they would stake claims and they would colonize and put posts in place. This is now part of Rome. My question to you, what have you colonized in your, in your world, in your domain that says this is God's. You don't colonize your children. You don't colonize your family. You don't colonize your finances. You just say it is what it is. Stop saying it is what it is. It is what it is because you allow it to be what it is. Now let's go a little bit further with this. So God put man over earth. You will, and so let me help you. We are physical beings. Earth was created for physical beings. The God lives in heaven. You get to visit heaven. You will never live in heaven. If you were going to live in heaven, right, like we think, then why would there be a new earth and new heaven? What's the point? The point is, God is saying, I love you being here, but this is my domain. I'm going to create a new heaven and new earth, and I'm putting you back on earth 
to operate and to function in the domain I put you. The earth is created for humans. So you get to visit heaven. You're so eager to get there. But then God's saying, I'm sending you back because you're not in this class to rule and to reign. It's the spirit realm. Now, what that new earth and new heavens go be like and what we're going to do, I don't care. Don't worry about it. That's too far out. That's above my pay grade at this moment. So therefore, when God put us on earth as Adam, we are, our domain is earth. Now, when you look at the church, how much of the earth today looks like the kingdom of God? Now, I believe in free choice, free rights, and free will. But I'm telling you, we have abdicated our responsibility in training our children because if your children are trained up the way they're supposed to be trained, they should represent you more than they represent the world. We have downgraded our belief system. Diane and I were talking on the way in. Our downgraded our belief system. And don't, what I'm about to say is an analogy only. If you go back and look in the pictures of, or the images of 1900s, 1920s, everybody wore suits, hats, suits, dresses. I mean, they, everybody looked good. Today, you think everybody lives in the, in the, in the, in the Appalachians. What, listen, we think, listen, let me tell you how, how our mind, everybody listen to me, how our mind has, has we been conditioned. We think dressing up is having splits and holes in our genes. You will never see the, the, the king of England and his family ever wearing jeans with holes in it. And you and I have been conditioned to think, I'm in style. I want to tell you, you're not in style. You're living below your standard of what God's called you to be. If you're in style, you would never go to the courtroom and stand before the judge dressed like that. You will not go to an interview like that. You will not go to the White House like that. You say, oh, yes, I would. That's just how ignorant you are. That's called ignorance. I'm going to use the word darkness today. When you think of darkness, I don't want it to be confused with sin. Sin is a totally different thing. Darkness, when people live in darkness, it can be willful, willful but most of the time it's ignorance. I'm ignorant in doing this, not intentional about doing it. I'm, please understand, I'm not criticizing or saying right and wrong and bad about your whole wardrobe looking like it come out of a thrift store. That's okay. I don't thrift store. I don't put anything on me that someone else has put on them. I don't want no underwear on me. I don't want no pants on me. I don't want no shoes on me. I don't want no socks that someone else has wore. I am above that. You don't have to be above it. I'm above it. I've done it at one time. But what I used to do when I grew up, mm, y'all don't understand it. And I understand who I was. I don't have to do what I used to because now I'm in a whole different dimension. I can go to Sam's and buy this shirt right here. If you catch it right, I can buy it for $4.81. Why for $4.81 do I want to wear someone else's skank stuff? Don't take this personal. I'm telling you, we are fine crawling under the table looking for crumbs. And God said something to the lady. And she said, a crumb is so valuable. He said, you are a daughter. Get out from underneath that table. Are you help? Am I helping anybody here for a minute? You're not going to get this and this change in you tomorrow. You have, you have to be raised in this 
have a revelation in this and begin to function in it. And it will take time for this to occur. Years, months, decades, it could happen instantaneously if you get it. It doesn't mean you're superior. It doesn't mean you're better than. It just means, it means I have got to start living like I am supposed to live. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? See, the church is supposed to be, according to Ephesians 4, to equip. The church is to equip you to be what? No, 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 no. I know, I know, I know. I've been this, I've been in this too big. Don't, don't, don't try to don't try to BS me. The church has had an agenda and a mission to equip you to be an evangelist. To pass out tracts, to tell people about salvation, to work in the church. No, the church has equipped you to go into ministry. I'm here to tell you that 99% of everybody in Christianity has no business in ministry. I have even questioned myself in it. I'm in it. And I'm like, how do I get out of it? (laughs) But religion wants you in it. It says there are some pastors, some prophets, some this. Let me tell you how I know whether you are ready for ministry. Do you know anything about government and politics? No. Okay, that's one area. You know anything about fashion media? No, or yes, I don't know what your answer is. Do you know anything about finances, investments, 401ks, getting out of debt? Do you know anything about marriage, raising children, how to have a husband, how to have a wife? I'm here to tell you, most women, I I saw something, I don't know if Diane showed it the other day. T.D. Jakes is under all kinds of scrutiny right now, but as he come out and said, women, you don't want your men. You're not after a man. No man, want, if you got it all going together, no man, want, you don't need a man. First time Jakes has said something really controversial that I really enjoy. I like Jake. I think he's the best storyteller exists in the world in preaching. But he came out about women, and I'm telling you, the reason you're not married, look at what T.D. Jakes said. If you're all independent and you can do it all, you won't get a man. You have no need for a man. Just just go to China and clone yourself. And then marry yourself. Because that's what narcissism is anyway. I can't rabbit trail. I'm on a time schedule here. See, we are to rule. We are to rule when you are born again. God set you on earth. He set up a plan and you are to rule like God. Well, because of the fall of Adam, you have no way of knowing how to rule like God. So that's the reason when Jesus came on the scene, he says, wait. Hello, Baptists and all of you guys. Wait until you have Holy Spirit. But no, you care more about how many people you get wet. You care more about how many people you get saved. You care more about how many people you sign on the roll. They never become kings. So you have a big slave encampment is what you have. Bunch of orphans. And the pastor feels so good because you need me and need to be dependent on me. Let's go. So, in order for you to rule like God, because Isaiah 55 says, You don't think the way I think, I'm sorry, but we don't think the same way. 
It says, be renewed. first you need to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. You need Holy Spirit because He's your teacher, your developer, your guide, your encourager. You must have Holy Spirit. And once you have Holy Spirit, therefore you must renew your mind. Renewing your mind gives you the ability to think the way God thinks. And there, therefore you can be a king like God is. Now you're not ever going to be the sovereign God the immortal God in the sense, the, the all-knowing God, but you, I'm going to show you in Scripture, the church gets so upset, you get so upset when you talk about being a God. And the only reason you don't see yourself as a God is because of what religion has taught you. No king feels inferior in their own domain. If, there, if you walk around in your house and you feel inferior in your house, there's a problem. You act, live, talk, kick, whatever you do in your house because that is your domain. But when you go into someone else's house, you're a little bit more reserved. And when you go into a... A courtroom, you are a lot more reserved. And when you go into a guest place, you are a lot more reserved. In fact, you don't get into the White House unless you have an invitation. So you're not even reserved. you got to get there by invitation. So what I'm saying to you, when you understand who you are in God, you have to understand this earth belongs to me. And we're uncomfortable in our domain The spirit realm, because we don't understand who we are in the spirit realm. Y'all know, y'all. The analogy I gave is just such a good analogy. It's just such a good analogy. That come out in the last 10 years, 15 years. I'm a queen, I'm a king, know who you are. That is the biggest BS you can ever utter out of your mouth. And let me tell you why. Someone never has to announce they are a king. Listen, 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 listen listen to this. When the Saudi Saudi prince came to America for a medical procedure three years ago, He flew in with three 747s. Who's that? Now listen to me. Listen to me. When he got picked up at the airport, there were 100 limousines. When he went to to the medical place... He completely bought out, rented out, whatever you want to call it, the entire medical floor. And every worker on the medical floor, he gave a free vacation to Daba. Did he need to say, I'm a king? Hey, 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 y'all not with me, y'all not with me. You could see the evidence that someone had money. You could see the evidence that someone had authority. You could see the evidence that someone had influence. You could see it without anybody stating it. And he was generous as he went. Oh, y'all not not in the same... Solomon... That, uh, three planes flying one guy. A hundred limos. That's just the people that was hanging, his entrepreneurage that was hanging with him. What happened to MC Hammer, the reason MC Hammer went broke out of the hundreds of million dollars he had, he had 350 people on his staff just to hang around with him. See, he acted like a king without being a king. 
When you act like something you're really not, you go broke. No, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. See, you need to wear the brand to take, tell someone you got a little money. I can't take you to my house because it looks like crap, but look how I look. <laughs> my underwear is 10 years old, but look at my tennies. Huh? Hello, hello, y'all hear what I'm saying? I am telling you, I am telling you the difference between what a king is and what people that are wannabes are. The church is full of wannabes. They don't know how to be something because they've never been fathered into something. So therefore, they try to be something based on what they're seeing others produce. Oh... Uh. Hello? See, Holy Spirit comes and it says you don't need nothing because Holy Spirit is in you. What is this? What is in you? Holy Spirit is here to train you and I how to be kings. Because one, he's got to change the way you think. Hello, y'all talking about that. Kings don't think this way. Kings don't pray this way. Kings don't talk this way. I have got to, we've got to work on your behavior. We've got to work on your speech. We've got to work on the way your conduct is. We have to upgrade you because you do not represent the kingship. And that is what Holy Spirit is there. Have you ever noticed, it might be in the Bible, I'd have to look this up, but many times in movies in different places when when people encounter kings, they say, oh, excellent one. What does that mean? They see excellence. One of the things you've got to get in your spirit that everything you do is excellent. Not OCD, not is the best that you the best that you can do. It is not comparing yourself, it is not outdoing anybody, it's not cheating or scheming. I gave you the best that I can give you. I give you excellence. Kings do excellent. It takes your breath away. You remember me doing the leadership teaching on Moneyball. The guy asking for some paperwork. He said, give me a couple. And the guy come back with 58 sheets of paper. About, he said, he got the job immediately. I want to tell you, if you learn excellence, you will be hired. You'll never be without a job. My employee that works for me, a whole other story we'll talk about. But he's in training. It took a year before he ever wore a Dangerous Curves t-shirt. A year. There's been times I had the Dangerous Curves t-shirt in my hand going to give it to him. And he said something or did something and I turned around. There's been time I was going with money to give him extra money and tips. And he opened his mouth and I put the money in my pocket. I want to tell you because you do not know how to act like a king, talk like a king, and carry yourself like a king. That many of the benefits that God wants to get in your hand is shut down because you act opposite of a king. It matters. You are ambassadors. I'm not telling you to be bougie. I'm not telling you to act a certain way. Listen, you either are or you are not. Someone saying you bougie don't make you bougie. I'm sorry. So my question is, how do I begin to look at whether I'm really functioning as a king? If you have no impact over your children, if you have no, if you have no authority over your children, you can't be a king out there when you can't be a king over your own offspring. If you study Nehemiah, Nehemiah got scared and turned white because the king looked at him and said, What's wrong with you, son? 
because his demeanor was off. You do not have a bad demeanor in the presence of a king. You were killed by having a bad demeanor. You didn't wear your feelings on your sleeve. You didn't roll your eyes. You didn't go, oh my gosh, you want me to do it again? You'd do it a hundred times with a smile on your face. If you would learn who you are in God, you would start having kingly kids instead of devilish kids. I walk in and see kids or walk around and see kids... I, never, I don't use the word bad, but I look, you use the word, you have a parent who doesn't know who they are. Because it is never the kid's fault, it is the mom's fault and the dad's fault of how that kid is operating, talking, functioning, and reacting. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I remember Carmen telling me some about someone who so worked and didn't like being told by the supervisor what to do. And the next day, the, I think the individual cursed out or took the badge off and cursed out the supervisor. Whose fault? We don't want to cast blame, but let me tell you who it is. That's mama's fault. That's daddy's fault. You allowed it because you abdicated your responsibility to equip your children to be kings and queens. You don't see the gift you have. You just want pleasure. You just want peace. You just want sleep. You just want to be able to get on your phone. Have I own parents' issue? No, this is the church issue. When you have people in the church living together, that's a parent issue. Pastor, well, it's none of my business. No, it's not because you're not a king. You don't know who you are. You're wounded, you're an orphan. You're dysfunctional. I'm not being critical. But that, that's why we raise up dysfunctional people. How does people be on a prophetic team and end up having an affair together? How does the, how does the, oh my gosh, how does the senior pastor of a church, his son, and I know numerous pastors. Their son is the praise and worship leader sleeping around with everybody on the worship team. Who is that leader of your church? It's not a king. Because if you knew who the king was, so to speak, I'm using, using terminology, if you had any respect for the king... You wouldn't, you got to, oh, you got to be like Joseph. You may be like, oh, but I got to go. Did y'all get that? <laughs> Did you? Oh, y'all may not get that. You got to understand, I don't have time to talk to you about Potiphar's wife. But this girl was, these were the, these were the, the, the J-Lo's and the Kardashians. These were, these were the women. It, it says Esther went through one year of body rubs and massages and oils. She reeked good smelling. Why? She was in preparation for the king. I'm just going before, the, I may have an opportunity to go before the king. I'm in prep for a year just before I have the opportunity. So we're talking about women that was, that, that was candidates for queens. These were the best in the land. That's why Abraham had a problem. Abraham had a woman that was like, everybody wanted her. It's like my wife. Everywhere she goes, everybody's like, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Why you look like that? Because of my king. That's what she tells him. She says, hey, she says my husband, but see, you got to be able to translate husband. She says, my king, I got to look good for. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. (laughs) 
<laughs> hey, yeah. See, the church is supposed to be equipping kings and kings send out in order to influence and go into the seven spheres, the seven mountains, and to establish the kingdom that you're in representation of in all these areas. Oh, this is a one, one Sunday message. This is a closing message, y'all. Man, there's been a lot said in 32 minutes. I'll tell you that right now. You could break this up in 10-minute segments and do this for like two months. Are y'all with me? No, no, no. Notice, we, you, you, you got to understand that, that you have to be trained. You're raised up to be trained of how you operate in excellence and how you operate in speech and how you operate. And nothing I said, don't take it wrong. But I'm just telling you, when you start looking at people, not that are kings, but just have high levels of money, you can spot them. Well, even if they don't have money, at least if they think something of who they are, they dress different. I just want to be comfortable. I just like being comfortable. I don't know. You just don't know how to be a queen. So you choose to be comfortable because you don't know how. And it's better to choose an excuse than to feel like a failure. But that's where discipleship comes from. That when it's not a book study, but when you get together and you're one on one or a couple of people, then oh God, this is so deep. My whole thing, I was I was journaling this yesterday, and my whole thing is if I had to go back now at what the main thing that I would teach as as a king teaching the body of Christ, the first thing I have to teach you is who you are. If you get who you are right. If you get who you are right, it changes everything. Because you're not going to be acting like that when you've been trained right. You won't act like that not because someone expects higher of you. You won't act like that because you know who you are. That is below me. Let's just talk. Let's just break it down real, 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 real low here. Do you know there's people, I know people, that would, will not darken the door of a Walmart? It is beneath them. The people that go there, the, 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 the quality they carry, it's above that. They will not enter a food line. And we have these echelons, in case you don't know. Let me just help you out in the food industry. Piggly Wiggly. That's the, that's the economy, people. They want something cheap. Huh? They, want, they, they have steaks. They have steaks, but the steaks have this much fat at the, at, beside the steak. You, you're chewing for 30 minutes. It's econo steaks. No, no. You got Piggly Wiggly. And then you go to Food Line. And if you want to step up, Then you go over here to Lowe's. And then you go from Lowe's up to Harris Teeter. And the prices keep changing as you go up. The quality keeps changing as you go up. And then if you totally want to go somewhere, you can go to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Publix is for the public. It's for everybody. Anybody can go to Publix. But you understand, you understand what I'm saying to you. There is a place. It happens in the church. It happens in your life. I am, I am very, very aware of what things cost. But at the same time, I'm very aware, deeper behind the scenes, of what 
the truth is about that product or what's going on. There's just a lot of dynamics in that. But let's go a little bit further. So Mark eleven twelve. if you start reading in Mark eleven twelve, we good with this? Mark eleven twelve. Jesus is hungry. Jesus is on the scene. He encounters. He said, hey, let's go over to this tree and get something to eat. He goes over to the tree. The tree has no fruit on it. Therefore, he speaks verbally out loud for everyone to hear him. He speaks to the tree, and within 24 hours, he didn't say anything. They didn't say, what's going to happen to the tree? In 24 to 36 hours, they're passing again by this same area, this same intersection, and they noticed. He didn't point it out. They noticed that the tree had died. Why? Evidence and fruit of hearing what someone says. When you talk, people hear it, and whether they are writing it down, it goes into their mind, and then when you make decisions and choices, when you choose someone, however it works, then they recalculate that, and it's brought to their mind. Well, they didn't stick to their word. They didn't stick to what their standard was. They didn't stick to... They said, hey, this tree is dead. And then when you get the verse like 23, 24, 25... Jesus says, if you will speak to the mountains and tell it what you want it to do, it will be done. See, he was demonstrating what a king does. He was demonstrating it. The whole point when Jesus, if you study out the scripture, when Jesus was on the boat and the storm came, he spent the, that prior day, that, the, that first part of the day, he taught on 13 parables about the kingdom of God. And then when they were in the boat, Jesus was sleeping. And when he was sleeping in the boat, they had an opportunity to act like a king. They got upset. They thought they were going to die. They woke Jesus up. Jesus got up and said, be still. And he reprimanded them. I just spent 13 parables all day with you to tell you how to speak to the situation and you're coming to me. See, you still want to call someone to pray for you to get what you need. Well, this church just doesn't provide what I need. No, the church isn't supposed to provide what you need. The church is supposed to strip off what's on you and equip you to be what God says you are. You're supposed to... You are supposed to discover who you are, not someone tell you who you are. Hey. None of this is, this is just flow. This is, I love the flow. (laughs) Hebrews 10.23, that's in your notes. It says, listen to this, let us seize. You got to look up the word seize. Let us hold fast and let us retain this, this, in one translation, it says, let us hold fast our confession. Y'all with me? It's, now, notice the scripture. So let us seize. You need to look these words up later. Let us seize. Let us hold fast. Let us retain without wavering. Now, we can go over the James, and it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He will be tossed to and fro and back and forth. You have to. That's why when we, when we, when we begin to confess things, but we haven't went deep enough in it to know what we're confessing, to seize it, to hold fast to it. That's the reason why it's so easily changed. Now notice what it says. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess. Go with me. And acknowledge our acknowledgement of it. Of what? Of what we're confessing, what we're holding to. For he who promised is reliable and sure and faithful to his word. If you have been in the word and got a revelation of the word and you know who you are and you know what God says, when you speak it, you have to believe that it will come to pass. If you do not believe it will come to pass, then you have not come to the realization you are a king yet. A king never says, you think they go do it? You think it'll happen? Remember how John the Baptist got beheaded? I mean, think about that statement. He was all worked up over this belly dance. He was down there at Cheetahs. He was all worked up with the pole dancer. 
And he said, whatever you want, half my kingdom I give to you. She went back and consulted with her Jezebel mom and said, what do you want? She said, get the head of John the Baptist. Came back out and said, we want the head of John the Baptist. He was like, that can't, I can't do, no. What he decreed could not be reversed because when you decree it and then you back, you sound like the White House, when you walk back, <laughs> What you said, it discredits and disqualifies who you are and your authority. So therefore, whatever you decree and declare, it is done. And they brought John the Baptist's head out on a platter. All because the king spoke something he shouldn't speak. See, you can speak things you should mm, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. See, some of us is speaking things. Let me speak to the ladies in the house. You, some of you just want a man so bad or the men, you want, a, you want a man so bad or a woman so bad, whichever sex you are, that you're willing to just take something. Ephesians 3.10, the purpose is that through the church, I'm not talking about a centralized building. The church, you are the church. But two to three people, five people, ten people, a hundred people. But through the church, the complicated, many-side wisdom of God in all of its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known. You are supposed... Solomon was a picture type of the church, so to speak, because when he spoke, when situations come, and remember the lady that they had the two babies and they didn't know which baby, and he brought the babies for them and said, cut the one in half, and the other lady caved in and said, no, 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 don't kill the baby. He had wisdom, manifold wisdom for complicated situations. If there's ever been a time that you need to be operating in manifold, complicated solutions, it's in an asinine society and an asinine government and an anti-spirit, anti-Christ spirit that's leading and operating in this nation. And we don't know how to distinguish, discern, or determine what's going on in this nation. Where does wisdom come from? It says, ask. Jesus is wisdom. That was his name. Are you all with me? So Jesus is wisdom. So wisdom is an incorruptible seed. The incorruptible seed is inside of you. So you have, listen to me, you have the same level of wisdom as Jesus. The same level. Well, I don't believe that. Okay, are you less righteous than Jesus? Is there a bigger righteous and a greater righteous and a less righteousness? You are the righteousness. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave you his righteousness. He didn't give you a diluted righteousness. He didn't give you an inferior righteousness. He gave you his righteousness. Therefore, how righteous am I? Uh, How righteous is Jesus? Well, he was perfectly righteous. Well, I'm perfectly righteous. Well, you're not, well, you, no, no, no. We're talking about my, my spirit is perfectly righteous. So therefore, I have perfect wisdom. I have Jesus wisdom. It says I have the, my, y'all know, y'all know, are y'all in the same Bible I'm reading this day? I have the mind of Christ. So God gave you what? A type of mind of Christ? He gave you a, what, what did he give you? You have the mind of Christ. You just have not developed the mind of Christ and renewed your mind. So the mind of Christ is functioning and flowing through you. <laughs> Dang, this is good stuff. That the church is supposed to make it known and people, when Joseph came on the scene and he answered a, 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 interpreted a dream, when we read in Acts 4, they said, these people's been with Jesus. See, we are with what we listen to. See, most people say, oh, you, you, you sound like a conservative. Oh, you sound, here, oh, you're trying to act white. 
You heard that before, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, you trying to you trying to act this? You trying to act that? No, I, I'm not trying to act anything. You, you, I'm a king. See, you need to understand something. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Libertarian. I'm not Independent. I'm not any of that. I am Kingdom first and foremost. I know y'all, some of you probably knew, I'm not even white. <laughs> I'm not even white. I know y'all like, well, you look white. That's because you're looking and you're not hearing. Because you can't act white. What? I mean, think about what you're saying. See, we haven't raised our children to quit trying to act like stuff and start being like something. Okay. So we know that the incorruptible seed was put in us, right? So a seed. Let's talk for a seed for a minute. So a seed is planted in us, right? Everything is in seed time and harvest. Oh, y'all with me? So the incorruptible seed is planted in you. Do y'all know what germination is? Okay, let me just give you a quick definition of germination. Germination is the process of something coming into existence, existence and developing. So when you look at germination, you can look at broccoli, kale, the germination for a broccoli or kale seed. A day. If you take asparagus or parsley, 28 days. What does that mean? That means that seed is sitting. It has to be not in the packet, not on the shelf, not on top of the ground. It has to be in the right environment with the right heat. There are certain plants, even though they're perennial and they come back every year, they will. Why do they come back? Because it's summertime? No. The earth, the ground, has to reach a certain consistent, constant temperature before it will cause an activation of this plant. It is built into this plant not to activate unless the temp is a certain degree. That's why you have different times when stuff comes out. Are y'all with me? So therefore, a seed, the germination of a seed, it is, it is the sprouting and the process of coming forth. It is, the seed is there. They call it the meat inside. And all of a sudden, you, there'll be just a, a, a... When that's in the right temp, the right moisture, the right light. Y'all with me? it will cause automatically that seed to sprout. Y'all not with me here. So, I know, I'm excited, God. That's okay. That seed must germinate, and then you start getting something. Now, notice, notice this right here. What gets us into trouble as Christians, the number one question, the number one thing you hear... People say, when you instruct your kids, when you tell people to pray about it, when you do this. Well, how long is it going to take? Understand something that is a natural chronos moment for you. Because when you say, how long will it take? That's because only in the natural domain do you have a time clock. In the kingdom of God, there is no time. That's why it says a, a day is a thousand, a thousand years with the Lord. He doesn't function on time. Eternity, how do you, why do you even have a clock on eternity? Is it just going to keep going and going? That's, a, that's foolish. Why do I need a clock? I'm not, I don't use a clock. Give me a clock. I don't use a clock. Don't give God a clock. You understand the point, what I'm saying here. God does not work on your clock, but we put God on our clock and when it doesn't work in the time frame we think, we say, well, it doesn't work. And then we build a belief system and a theology of, oh, it doesn't work. I tried it and it didn't work. I, listen, 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 listen. 
All that I'm teaching right now, if I were to be on I-40 on the way home and my wife is not with me and I get in a car accident and my car flips four times and I'm ejected from the vehicle and I am killed or I'm whatever and you say, well, it didn't work. No, whatever, it doesn't matter your situation. It has no bearing on whether it works. Your experience does not mean it works or doesn't work. God is a God who cannot lie. And if He cannot lie, your experience is not in the same component or the same category of saying it doesn't work. If I get sick and die, does it mean healing doesn't work? If I go bankrupt and have to file a chapter whatever, it doesn't mean that prosperity doesn't work. Or y'all understand this? Don't, com- don't put your experiences with His Word. Okay, now, now follow me. How long will it take? How long will it take? As long as it takes. You see, see that's what the, how long will it take? What's the answer to that? Let's back up to a scripture we just read a while ago. Hebrews. <laughs> how long will it take? I don't know how long it will take. All I know is I'm holding fast. I read something really cool that is in Israel, they found a date palm seed. And that seed was 2,000 years old. And they planted it, and it is growing. Why is that seed 2,000 years old? Because it was never put in the proper climate for it to germinate. Oh, y'all not hear what I'm saying? It's not that all the messages you've heard has not been good messages or good seed. It's that they entered your ears, they stayed in your head, and they never made it to the... They're in the packet. Rattle it. You hear all kinds of seeds in the packet. You're one of those little bobble Christians that sit on the, on the dashboard like that. Your head is full of information. Your head is full of knowledge. You can quote a scripture. You have all the religious cliches, but nothing has ever shaken and worked itself down into the soil. Oh, yeah, I'm preaching something here. You're a Bible Christian. And when you're a bobblehead, you will always end up wobbling. <laughs> that, that, we need a DJ for that one. Wobble, wobble. <laughs> Bertha, you know that was good. You can laugh on that one. Dang. 2,000 years that seed's been sitting. It doesn't mean that. No, no, let, let me read. I, want, I do want to read that. Typically, typically, seeds are still viable for up to one to two years. As time goes on, the, vi- the vi- viability of seed diminishes. After a month has passed, listen, after a month has passed, if a seed has not sprouted roots, isn't showing leaves, and looks unchanged, it's probably not viable. Now, we're talking about a natural seed. What I want to tell you is that when you have been confessing and praying and you have nothing unchanged, you have no evidence, you have no sprouting, your prayer is probably not viable. Something's off on it. It's not in the right environment. It's not in the right situation. Maybe you haven't watered it enough. Maybe you haven't cultivated it enough. Maybe it has grown up, but there's so many weeds. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Something's choking it out that you can't distinguish between what the plant is and what the weed is. That's good, Heather, right there. I'm going to give myself some money. Damn. I'll bless myself. I don't need you to bless me. (laughs) I'm just pausing for for it to work its way down. Your mouth's full. I don't want to stuff any more in. Just just swallow, okay? Take a a breath. Drink something. Are y'all with me? Where are we? Good. We're going to finish up. So we talked about I'm trying to encourage you. So we talked about, when we've been talking about the word and the stuff, we've been talking about the captain. 
the, 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 the words, what comes to your tongue is a rudder. So when you have a boat, when you have a vessel, a ship, whatever terminology you want to use in the nautical terms, so you have a vessel. So a vessel has a, a captain, okay? So you are the captain of your vessel. Are you all with me? So how do I steer the vessel? With a... There's a, we, we want to use nautical terms here. A helm. Okay. Okay. So we have a helm. Y'all with me? So we have the captain. I'm the captain of my vessel. And I have a helm. The helm steers my vessel. The helm is your words. Your vessel goes in the direction of your words. You're never going to be anything. That vessel becomes what you are decreeing it to be. Hello? We're going a little bit further. So I'm the captain. So, the, so I'm the captain. I got the helm. I'm steering with my words. Okay? I govern this whole vessel. You know, the captain's the last one on the boat. The whole vessel... If a captain feels that someone is not listening or they're a detriment to their vessel, they will dock and eject you off the boat. Do you all understand that? So as I am governing the vessel, what does that mean? I am governing the atmosphere. No, no, I hear what I'm saying. Do you govern the atmosphere? I govern... Why are you talking mutiny on my boat? No, y'all don't know what I'm saying. This is good, Papa John, isn't it? Why are you talking mutiny on my vessel? We allow our thoughts, emotions, and friends and people to talk mutiny about overthrowing the king. When we're supposed to be governing the atmosphere of what's going on. So the captain has the helm, which is his words, who directs or steers the boat. I am the governor over the atmosphere and the responsibility on my boat. Which, how, how, do, I, how, do, I have, how do I govern this boat? It's my rank. Captain. That's why they have birds and all this. When you see, you don't walk past a captain on the boat and don't say anything. They teach you in the military, even in the enlisted, that when you pass something, you salute. Why? It's teaching you. It's dumb. Why do I have to salute? It's teaching you. No, 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 notice we've got to go a bit further. Governs the vessel by his rank. How do I govern my life? By the Spirit. The Spirit bears witness. I just ran into someone the other day. Your Spirit should be saying, run! I wonder if it was the Lord. Run! <laughs> I wonder if I'm supposed to witness. Run! I, I saw something sometimes on, on Facebook or whatever. They do these little things and it's funny. That, Run! You know, it's... it's a, you ever seen those, those little... They do those little things where someone comes up and drops a book bag and a group of people and everybody runs. They don't know what's in the book bag. There's just some people that should walk up in while you're talking to people and you say, I gotta go. Listen, listen, listen. There's Christians you should run from. There's churches you should run from. There's pastors you should run from. And instead, you're trying to get marriage counseling, parenting counseling. You're trying to get financial counseling from people that you should be running from. No, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. So I got the helm that steers the boat. 
I got the rank and the spirit because I'm a king that can govern the boat or the vessel. So how do I get this thing in motion? The rudder is when you speak it. It's not just words. It's speaking the words. Speak to the mountain. That gives you propulsion. Now, sometimes it's slow. You just hang on. It's creating. If you ever, you ever been going in, I don't know if you've done this, in a boat and you're going forward and then you need to go in reverse and you put it in reverse and look at the back of that motor. It's just chaotic. You were going one direction. Now you put the, the propeller in another direction and it's chaotic back there. I mean, it's like what in the world is going on if you look at it and nothing happens. It's just kind of like standing still. You don't take it out of the gear. You just put it in because it's not doing anything and go back to the other direction. You just keep it there and hold on to the... Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You hold fast that you know where you put it is going to work and that thing will stir some chaos, but then the chaos will settle because I brought direction to this chaos. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Job 22, 28. This is good stuff right here. Job 22, 28. You ready? You shall. Notice you shall. Jada shall. Jackson shall. You shall. You. That's your name. You shall also decide and decree a thing. You have to decide and decree what you're going to do. What you're not going to do. You have to decide and and. Decree what your children's go do. Where your children are going. Where they're not going. What kind of attitude they will have. What kind of attitude you will not have. How you will dress. How you will not dress. Who you will date. Who you will not date. Well, you know, they have to decide when you are out on your own. With your own car, paying for your own beautiful electricity coming in, buying your own groceries, washing your own underwear, you can decide who you date and who you marry. But as long as you're in my domain, you're going to have some listening and we're going to discuss who knocks on the door. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Well, that's micromanaging. No, I am a king and I'm in charge of this domain. When you want to leave the domain and venture out on your own, bye. But I am governing. Oh, y'all not hearing. See, you don't understand kingship. You understand democracy. That everybody has a decision and what they like and what they feel and what they want matters. No, it doesn't matter because you... Oh, let me tell you about a king. A king never pays attention to the will of the people. Because, you said, well, that sounds wrong. Because the reason... I, I get ahead of myself. Well, I just want them to make the right decision. You can't expect them to make the right decision when they've not been under a king. Because I teach them how to be a king to make good decisions. You, dece- you decide and decree a thing. When you decide and decree a thing, it shall be established. Well, I don't know how that happened. I know how it happened. You never decided on it. You never decreed it. So therefore, it just happened. I was in intercession this week. I tell my wife, I'm in intercession. That Powerball was $1.2 billion. Lord, Lord, Lord. I've never bought a lottery ticket, but I'm like, I'm always open. <laughs> this, you may be wanting to show something. $1.2 billion. Oh, my gosh. No, 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 notice, we got to go. See, see, listen. It shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. When you decree it, when you declare it, then It's going to be established and people will see it in your ways. I see the hundred limousines. I see the three jumbo jets. I see see it on your ways that you are a king who is establishing and decreeing things. 
I don't know if this is excite you, but this is exciting Christian faith for me, man. Okay, let's go. On. Moses said to Pharaoh, what did he say to him? Let my people go. He spoke it with his mouth. Let them go. He didn't do anything else. And when he said, let my people go, he decreed and declared something. And when he said, let them go, what happened? Tension and trouble increased. Maybe we go back to the rudder, right? Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Y'all with me, right? When he put it in gear and he changed the gears of Pharaoh and said, let my people go, it created chaos and he increased their workload, he increased their labor, he increased their tension. He made it so bad on them that they were saying, go where? And Moses went back and said, God, I said what you said, but it got worse. <laughs> when it gets worse, you want to change direction. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He spoke to the mountain what he wanted and what he heard God say. God, he was the mouthpiece for God and he spoke it. And, and, and Pharaoh tried to, get him to, tried to get him to compromise. I'm going to let you go, Papa John, but... Leave your livestock here while you go. Leave your family here while you go. See, it seems good. But God didn't say leave anything. What did he tell Abraham? Leave. Take all your stuff. Oh, y'all not here. There's another series coming right here. See. See, some of us, the reason we are, we're not willing to leave anything because we're so insecure about who we are that we want to stay connected to our past instead of leaving our past. You go know where I am. Well, they won't know where I am. Well, listen, if you got, I'm here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I know someone that's got 100 limousines that was out in Arizona. Paul said, your great faith has traveled. When you know who you are, they go find out where Abraham went. And if they want to come, let them find you. But see, you want to carry people with you. Because you are fearful that people will say things about you. My, what, Blackville, South Carolina, all the things they say about me, my own family. My mom said, I don't even know who you are, boy. They think I'm all kinds of things. I'm not anything. I left. There's nothing there. If I would have stayed, look where look, you would be in. Look where would you be? <laughs> huh? Bishopville, Bennettsville, Hartsville, Red Clay, Georgia. Where would you be? Canapolis? Where would you be? Moorhead City? Harold's? West, West Virginia? Where would you be? God had mercy on you. You thought he didn't have any mercy by having you here, but God says, I've got mercy. Listen, listen. So what we call monarchical absolutism is where a king has absolute authority because a king is considered to know the will of God. And what he says and what he decrees does not matter what the people say or what their will is because he has absolute favor from God on what he's doing. Now, that's not, that is man-made. That's not absolutely true in the sense of the natural. But in the kingdom, it is. He says, if you... Jesus says, I do nothing unless the Father tells me. Okay? Now, you, you might want to write this down because this might, this, this might get your head messed up a little bit. You can have doubt in your head and faith can still work. 
but you cannot have doubt in your heart and get faith to work. Did y'all get that? You can have doubt in your head and faith can still work for you, but you cannot have doubt in your heart and get faith to work for you. Why is that? Doubt precedes unbelief. Doubt, I cannot keep doubts coming out of my mind. Whatever you're doing, if you're talking, if you're thinking about getting, starting a business, your mind's going to have doubts. I wonder if it'll work. I wonder if I got on it. Doubt, doubt is not, you got to study out words and understand them. Doubt is a natural thing that's going to come. But when you don't deal with doubt, it will, it will solidify into unbelief. Don't let doubt freak you out. Unbelief. You need to study scripture, what it says about unbelief. Okay? So let's look at this. We're almost done. Ecclesiastes 8.4 8, Ecclesiastes 8, is so good. Y'all ready? For the word of a king is authority and power. And who can say to him, what are you doing? His commandment is backed by great power. No one can resist or question it. Now look at, I was going to go deeper in this, but we'll come back on another, another season and uh, catch up the next episodes of this. But let's look at Psalms 82.6. Look at this. I said, I said, you are God's. Let us make man in our image. What? God class. You, when you function as a king, you are functioning in a God class. When you are in the world and you don't function as a king, but you just function with education, you are in world class. We're happy with world class. We're uncomfortable with God class. Are y'all with me? Y'all with me? Notice what it says. I said, you are gods. You were all sons of the Most High. You are in a God class. Your spirit is a God class. You are in a king class. You are in a priest class. And this has to get so in you that you do not waver in what you say, how you say it, and you hold fast your confession because you heard what God said. Anybody in here play chess? I wrote this down here this morning. In chess... The goal is never see I want to say it. In chess, the goal is to never trap you, but to capture you. Does that sound right? The enemy knows that he cannot capture me. I'm uncapturable. I don't know if that's a word. It sounds good. I'm uncapturable, I'm unstoppable, I'm invincible, I'm immovable. The enemy knows that I am in a God class and therefore I have all authority and dominion over this earth and over every principality and power because God, Jesus, took that back and gave me the keys. So therefore, I can't capture you, Heather, but I will trap you. He don't have to capture you. But he can trap you. And when you get trapped, I think sometimes it's more miserable than being captured. Your past has trapped you. Your, your connections has trapped you. Your spending has trapped you. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Your marriage has trapped you. Oh, God, did I say that? Yeah, 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 yeah. When you marry the wrong person, it traps you. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. 
A church religion will trap you. Your job will trap you. Oh, y'all not here. I feel Holy Ghost in here. You are trapped by stuff that you thought was sent by God when it was sent by the enemy. Remember, he is an angel of light. And he will trap you by things that look good. Because you don't know you are God class, world class, and you are willing to accept average and normal and just to be happy instead of living in the dimension that God has you to be. It's good stuff right here. Yes, she is. I'm going to be out of money today. Hmm. Jesus. It's illegal to move a king into check or leave it in check. Y'all hear me? To move into a place that checks you means it's illegal. And it's illegal to be in check and not move out. Oh, God. Hey! Lisa, oh, you can't take enough notes for this right here. Your hand's tired. I deliver you from note taking. Listen to me. It's illegal to move into check. It's illegal to be in check, to find yourself getting trapped in an entrapment and not move out. But yet religion tells you to stay where you are. And the body of Christ and the church, you have been illegally in places you have no business being. I'm going to be out of money in a little bit. (laughs) It's illegal. And you find yourself in jacked up places and you're just like, well, I'm I'm just going to go do this. No, no, no. You got to deal with this. But because you don't see yourself as a king, you don't know how to decree and declare yourself in that situation to move you out. So we find ourselves entrapped and in check in relationships. So we just stay out of relationships, out of friendships, out of all these things because they're they're in a stalemate position, so to speak. They're, They're dead ends and we don't know how to get out of them. We don't know what to do. So we keep creating alternative routines in our life because we abdicate the responsibility as a king to deal with it. Oh, this has been some crazy stuff. Are you a king? If you don't open your mouth, we ready about ready for the video. Get ready. If you don't open your mouth, listen. Don't play it yet. But listen, if you don't open your mouth, you're not a king. You don't get to think it in your head, you're a king. Well, God understands it's a king. No, it's private. It's a king. No, no, no. Kings know who they are. This is first installment of planting seeds into you to begin for you not to boldly, not to arrogantly, not to prideful. That is the biggest thing when you start coming into Revelation. You can become prideful and arrogant instead of people wanting what you have. They repelled by what you have. A king is generous. A king is helpful. A king is serving. I'm going to say this. I'm just going to say this. And this is probably a big turn from something I used to do and be. But I think you will understand it. Someone called me this week and they've been calling me about giving to the police department. And I said, absolutely, I am not giving to law enforcement. And they said, well, you seem to have turned against law enforcement. I said, I have not turned against law enforcement. But let me redefine what, what we're talking about here. One, law enforcement is not to go around seeing how many people they can lock up and try to fill a quota. Law enforcement, the police is on the car, says, I'm here to protect you and to serve you. And when was the last time I've had an officer to serve me? I can't remember. 
They want to act arrogantly and talk smart and throw their badge around. You can't throw your badge around on me. Don't, don't throw your badge. I care nothing about your badge. You're here to serve and protect me, not harass me, not, not, get, not push me. When's the last time you're having a conversation and you worry about my family and you worry about my car and you worry about my business, not trying to always run around enforcing something? Hey, y'all. See, we want justice reform, little rabbit trail. We want justice reform so that we can have less interaction with the law. No, I want the law, but I want to know you understand your role and your position. You are here to serve me. Now, that's going to piss you off right there. You want to serve the people you want to serve. You want to serve the color you want to cut. You want to serve. You want to serve the certain neighborhoods. No, you're here to serve and protect all people. So no, until you do some reforming, I don't give you any money. Sorry. Hello. Does this help you today? Okay. So you've heard this, but now we're going to activate this before we go. And if you need to go and you're on the Kronos time clock, then go ahead and raise your hand and scooch on out. Because I don't want any pressure that you're trying to meet some deadline. This is just as important that we begin to implement.